first and foremost, uh, if you can give us the injury update as to uh, the availability of the likes of Jim to Brian and, and the other players that may be question marks over. Yeah, so uh, Luke McGrath, he's passed the grad, he did return to play, um, and he'll, he's due to train this week. Sean Cronin came through the week, came through the game against the Ospreys with no issues after his return from a back injury. Um, Kyrie Ringrose, he picked up an, angling, an ankle injury uh, with Ireland, and he's an, unavailable for a number of weeks. Uh, as is Will Connors, who picked up a knee injury. He'll be unavailable for eight weeks. Um, James Ryan is continuing to follow the graduated return to play protocol and he's unavailable for selection this week. Uh, Rowan Osborne picked up a fracture to his hand and he will undergo surgery this week. Um, the other um, injury list really is Kean Callagher, Callagher, Jimmy O'Brien, Tommy O'Brien, Adam Byrne, Caelan Doris, Stan Levy, Connor O'Brien and Max Deegan. So no great news injury front wise with the likes of James that uh, that uh, head injury assessment and the return to play. What's the difficulty there? Is there uh, other complicating factors that are going to keep him out of action for a longer period than would be the norm? Oh, you know it's it's very much in the uh, limelight, isn't it? Concussion, etc. So I'm not going to delve um, any further away from this statement because it's a serious issue you know and we've got the best interests of the players at at, uh, at heart really as is everybody else so we'll just um go through the the protocols and give them as much time as, as is required really for all the other returning ireland internationals is anyone not available due to player management um issues or are all the are all the returning guys who are fit are they available for selection yeah, I take it they are, because the names aren't on this list they've got in front of me. So, Rugby Worldwide thrives on local derbies, particularly um, a, a cup final, but these two teams know each other so well, it's, it's a bit like a chess game. Have you, have you any forwards moves up your sleeve there? <laughs> uh, if I did, I wouldn't be sharing them anyway, but... Um... It's, it's a big ask, isn't it? I mean, to come out of an Irish camp, um, to finish on such a high note, um, everybody playing really well, um, you know, uh, contributing massively to a, to a great result. Uh, and then they're going to find themselves pitted against each other uh, a week later. So it's, it's going to be interesting. Um, the players know each other better than we do as coaches. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's a bit of a challenge. It's a bit of a balancing game this week with regards to introducing uh, those guys back into the fold. Um, obviously, the players that we've had be- that, left, that were left behind with us, they've been going well as well. Um, so it gives us a bit of a headache as a coaching team, um, but we've, we've just got to get on with it, you know, and, and uh, make sure that everybody feels, feels the love um, because it's a tough place to be, really. Um, some of these guys have been playing some great rugby during the year uh, and possibly could miss out on, on, a, on a place in the final, you know. But, um, yeah, the game on Saturday, <coughs> the result, hopefully if it goes our way, it'll, it'll, be, uh, it'll be a reflection of everybody's contribution uh, to the cause because it's been a, a pretty different season for a lot of reasons, you know. And um, we've got to be mindful of that and thankful that, you know, we're still able to carry on playing. So, um, yeah, it's going to be... Uh, an interesting week, and uh, hopefully, you know that game on Saturday will uh, live up to expectations. Uh, seeing as, as we had such a great feast of Six Nations rugby on Saturday. Indeed, and finally, Robin, do you think England or indeed Marco Filippola got the frustration of Ty Furlong's long injury layoff? Yeah, he did. You know, I mean. Um, <clears throat> If you're penalised in the opposition 22, um, it's very hard to get in there in the first place to gain entry into the 22, you know. So when you're in there, you've got to be pretty clinical. So, you know, I think England did did pay a price, really, for their indiscipline um, because they lost that territory. And, uh, you know, I think it had a huge bearing on the game, that battle between Mako and Tig, as you say, um, at scrum time. Uh, so, um, yeah, it was definitely Ireland's day. Um, and a, and a great victory for them.
You extended your, your deal with Leinster by two years and everyone else in the coaching staff now is staying on as well. Obviously nice to have that cohesive unit moving forward. Was it a big decision to stay or was there any hesitancy there on your part? No, nothing from my part really. Um, I still uh, I still see it as an honour um, that, I, that I was first asked by Leo to, to join the coaching team, to join such a, such a great um rugby team with a you know proud tradition proud history uh, and the identity um so um it's still a challenge you know i still uh, i don't take it lightly it's still a res responsibility um and one that i'm enjoying uh, obviously the the different nature of coaching uh, club rugby as opposed to international rugby has different challenges um but i'm uh, i'm really happy with another two years because you know, by the time you've got the grips with everything and, you know, with COVID uh, having an effect, um, it hasn't been the uh, the social sort of side of things. I haven't kicked off as well as the rugby. So um, hopefully it'll give give me a bit more time to get some, uh, to get to know, you know, other, other members of the staff and the players a little bit better uh, other than on the rugby field or in a changing room. Just, just wondering about the balance of team selection this week. Normally, the, the Pro 14 final might come later on in the season, but because you have such a massive game the week after, and I guess Leinster are now a club that will benchmark themselves off European success ultimately, how tricky is it to get the balance right with a massive game the week after? Yeah, um, it is tricky, you know, and um, <clears throat> we've used 57 players in this campaign. Uh, to date, you know, so there's, uh, there's, a, you know, that amount of turnover um, is testament really to the, to the, uh, to the cohesion that everybody's brought to the cause. Um, so the other thing to bear in mind, we've we've had a little bit of the short end, the sharp end of the stick with regards to having a short turnaround. You know, we've got a final on Saturday and then um, the quarter final on the Friday of the following week. So it's it's a short turnaround there. So you're going to have to bear that in mind as well. Um, and, you know, as you rightly say, we can't look any further than Munster. It's going to be a huge game, a huge occasion. Um, they're going to be gunning for us. You know, we know that. Um, and, uh, you know, we just got over the line um, against them in the last game. So, you know, they're going to be, uh, they're going to be really coming, at, coming after us. And... Um, so we've got to we've got to match that intensity, and we've got to live up to that. Um, and then we've just got to worry about you know the following week. Um, but I think the most important thing is Manchester on on uh, Saturday, and not to get derailed in thinking about what happens next week. Just in relation to the game on Saturday, um, would you agree that um, pressure-wise, most of the pressure will be on Munster because it's uh, it's ten years since they've won any silverware. So that creates its own pressure on them. I think both teams will be under pressure. Um, at the end of the game, at the end of the day, it's a final, you know, and uh, it's championship. Um, winner takes all, no second chance. Um, so I would say equally, the, you know, both teams are under pressure to perform um, and to win silverware. Um, you know the fact that Munster haven't won something for for that amount of time. Um, yeah, you could say that. You know they they'd be hungrier, but that, that's that's not a reason. That that, that would be an excuse, really. Um, like I say, we we've worked hard to get to this stage. Fifty-seven players have taken part in in the campaign so so far. It's a great reflection on the support staff and everybody else pulling together. Um, and if we can, you know. If we can finish things off on Saturday, I think it'd be it'd be great. And just finally, um, uh, having lost the game uh, against the Ospreys, does that have any bearing on how you go into this final, or, or is it just one of those games that didn't go right? I think the bearing, the learning we can take from it is understanding the motivation of the opposing team. Um, obviously, they gained Champions Cup. Um, qualification following the victory uh, and we've got to understand that they were motivated by that um, and you know similarly Munster you know as you've just said really they haven't won anything for a while um, so they'll be motivated by that um, but the fact that Leinster have been so successful over the years 
Um, we should be used to play to teams having that motivation of, of gaining a scalp um, and wanting to beat us, you know. So, um, it's un yeah, it's understanding that motivation, really. And, you know, Munster, Munster they pride themselves on the tighter aspects of the game. Um, mall, uh, scrum. So, you know, that's going to be a, ba uh, a big battle up front. So, that, you know, we, we don't feed them any sort of energy or give them any sort of life, really. Um, and it, it'll be a big challenge. You know, as I say, so um, yeah, looking forward to it.